Hello, welcome to Hard Mode and Hardware. Now, on Thursday this week, NVIDIA released the new drivers, uh, new graphics drivers for 25.31, which brought various improvements, but the main one being they've brought DXR ray tracing to older cards. Now, this is the newer 1600 and 1660 cards, but also Pascal cards um, from anything from the 1060, 6 gigabytes upwards, I believe. Uh, so, being a 1080 Ti user, uh, I thought I'd download them and give them a go do some comparisons and some benchmarks and show you guys. Now, it's DXR, not RTX. DXR is like RTX Lite, from what I can gather. Um, it's ray tracing that the older cards are able to handle. Now, it's the very first driver release with DXR enabled for these cards, so they're not optimized yet, but hopefully there will be more optimizations in the future for those of us who can't afford to stump up for a 2080 Ti, which is what my upgrade would be. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump in to the comparisons. So first up, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, DXR is ultra is on the left and Shadows is on the right. Now, that's what the DXR is for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It handles the shadows. So. Um, you've got your normal shadows that are baked on the right hand side and the ray trace shadows on the left hand side and as you can see it's sort of there's not a huge difference um, as you can see from the top left corner it runs like a potato at ultra settings um, even on a 2080, uh, 1080 Ti sorry um, the the difference it's softer shadows so they're more there's more ambient natural ambient occlusion makes it look a bit more realistic um, in this jungle scene you can see that um, the, the light's a bit more volumetric, a bit more realistic, and the shadows are softer, but not by a great deal. And it really does kill the frame rate in in the benchmark test anyway. I haven't had time to play the game a massive amount yet with it on. But as you can see, it's running under 30 frames per second a lot of the time. And when we get to the benchmarks, you'll see the, the figures about based on this benchmark. Um, on the right-hand side, with just the shadows on ultra, as you can see, it runs really smooth. But um, it, it doesn't look that much worse. So at the moment, for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I'm leaning towards saying, don't bother putting turning it on. Um, just stick with Shadows on Ultra Settings and leave DXR alone for this game at the moment. Um, this scene it runs okay to a point. It runs fine, in fact, up until about here when it starts to dip and then it becomes really choppy. But you do get a good sense of how it works in this particular scene because when it drops down into the market in a second, um, you'll see the shadows are a lot softer. They're a lot more realistic looking, uh, for my opinion. However, on the right, even with the crisp shadows and the, the, the sort of slightly faker looking ambient occlusion, it's still a great looking game. So for me, for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I'd probably leave it turned off. You can see the way it's running, but um, graphically as well, it's not that much. That's not that big a difference, really. Um, the shadows are more realistic, but because it only focuses on the shadows, uh, for me, it doesn't. It doesn't warrant having it turned on to lose that frame rate. Moving on to Battlefield Five, um, I've tried to to show similar footage obviously it's going to change each time but I've played through the first mission and um, so on the left you've got DXR on and on the right you've got DXR off now in Battlefield 5 allegedly it's more to do with reflections so we'll try and see if we can see the difference um, I've tried to sync it up as best I can and offer some comparison but we'll uh, see how it goes so in this scene which is in engine I can't I couldn't the, the reflections look less jagged jarring on the eye from that water as you as you drop in again the lights slightly more volumetric this is with DXR on and you can see the shadows again and the ambient occlusion a lot softer a lot more realistic you wouldn't have the sharp shadows necessarily um, at a distance from a light like this um, you can see if you look at the bottom of like the rocks on the right hand side the, the ambient occlusion is less less harsh because the light is bouncing off the floor and hitting the rocks but obviously to a lesser extent and now with DXR off you can see that it's a little bit more jarring on the eye it's the shadows are more jagged where they've been baked to react to what's going on so when the, 
the, sh the soldiers' shadows you'll see in a minute, they're a lot more harsh, even though they're quite a far distance away from the light source. Trying to show some difference in reflections here, but I can't really spot any difference on these, on the floor uh, at all, on the ice patches. Thing to keep an eye out for is reflections on the guns. Um, on the on the side, on the right hand side with the XR off, they're a lot more sort of um, harsh, whereas it's a softer on the left hand side. When this explosion happens in a minute, you might be able to tell um, the difference between the two. So if you look on the right hand side, it just seems a bit more unrealistic. There's there's a lot of light coming on the left hand side of the gun, which there wouldn't necessarily be. This scene, I think, shows it a little bit better because there's more explosions and fire and puddles to sort of um, base it off. If you look at the floor on the right hand side with the XR off, they, they look a lot. The reflections look a lot more fake. Um, you can just about see on the left hand side the XR on my own reflection um, to a point. But it's not to the same level as um, the demonstrations that NVIDIA gave us when we released this. And if you were using an RTX card, these reflections should be a lot more noticeable because they're, they're using Turing chip and they are designed to do ray tracing. This is ray tracing being shoehorned into the older cards to give us the opportunity to use it. Things to keep an eye out for in, on this one is... Like anything that catches the reflection of a flame, it'll look more realistic. Um, and any explosions, try and look at the puddles and you'll s on the left-hand side. Especially in this scene now, um, look at the puddles on the left-hand side, and you'll see the and, and the, the gun particularly. You'll see that the the explosions catch a lot better and more realistic than on the right-hand side, but still not that good. And um, when we get to the benchmark, you'll see the difference in performance and, and you can judge for yourself where you think it's worth it Personally again, I think it looks really nice with the XR on It still looks really nice with the XR off you see the the, the you couldn't really tell on the, the right hand side But on the left hand side that the the explosion reflecting in the puddles was a lot more realistic That's because it's been ray traced rather than baked in Again, for me, um, I'd probably t leave it turned off. It's it, it it's not worth it at the moment. I'd rather have the, the smoother frame rate. Even though the frame rate's not too bad, I'd rather have the smoother frame rate. So here's the benchmarks for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, so this is the built-in benchmark that you saw before. Um, so the minimum was 22 frames per second for DXR on Ultra, which is just a bit too low. It's dipping far too low for my liking. Um, 88 for shadows and those shadows look really good at 88 frames per second um, maximum 181 for shadows which is again it doesn't necessarily mean anything it might be a scene where it, it wasn't too complex and 134 for DXR which is actually quite impressive considering the extra power that's needed and, and the fact that the drivers are brand new um, but the averages sort of tell it all 116 average for shadows which look great uh, but only 48 for DXR, which for me doesn't add that much value at this point to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So what I'd probably look to do, I'd not look to do, I would just turn DXR off for Shadow of the Tomb Raider for the time being at least. So moving on to Battlefield 5 benchmarks, things get a lot more interesting. So the minimum frame rates I think have to be ignored. There'll be some sort of uh, black screen or something that's caused that, I don't know. Um, the maximum frame rates interestingly top out 147 frames per second for both with DXR and no DXR. And I think that's because my monitor is 144 hertz and Battlefield 5 seems to have some sort of inherent V-Sync built in and I can't seem to turn it off. I can't find a sentence for that. Uh, pop a comment below if you know how to turn that off because that would be good for me to be able to push that frame rate to the maximum and see how far I can go with it. Uh, but moving on. <laughs> yeah, pop a comment below if you know how to do that. Uh, averages is where it really shows. So, 130.25, which is quite impressive for a brand new game like Battlefield 5, which clearly relies on graphics a lot more than some games. Um, so that's completely, you know, playable. It's That's a good frame rate. DXR on, 66.88. Now, I've had a short play on this game 
oh well obviously I've played through for the video with DXR on it doesn't hamper the frame rate too much it's completely playable I didn't realize that I had it on I, I sort of knew that my frame rate was drop had dropped from from normal but it was still completely playable so if you are someone who likes the best like the most interesting most realistic graphics uh, and you've got a Pascal car one of these Pascal car well specifically a 1080 Ti because I don't know how this would run on anything less than that but if you if you are more into the graphics you've got a 1080 Ti then I would su suggest you could get away with play playing Battlefield with DXR on because um, it seems to run at a reasonable frame rate 60 frames per second is a reasonable frame rate it's not a good frame rate it's just a reasonable frame rate um, but for me I I personally like the, the higher frame rate, especially with multiplayer, I'd prefer the higher frame rate. So for me personally, I'm going to leave it off for now. I'm going to follow this uh, with interest um, as they release more versions of these drivers and maybe make it more efficient and maybe they will it will sh show a performance increase, especially on Shadow of the Tomb Raider where it's a bit like a potato at the moment. But um, for now, I'm going to leave DXR alone because I'm, I'd rather play games smoothly than play it and look slightly better which is all you're getting really with the xr is looking slightly better so thanks for watching guys um if you found this video interesting give us a thumbs up and drop me a comment below and let me know what you think of the xr if you're using it um don't forget to subscribe for more of these videos in the future um i'll probably put more benchmarks up as i as more games get released that have ray tracing support but also um as this driver progresses i might do more benchmarks and see if it improves over time I come back and compare them to this one um so yeah thanks for watching and don't forget play it on hard mode